Thank you, Art, for coming. Could you please change your name in English? Thank you. Hello, Hello. good morning. Good morning, Dr. Noor. How are you? I'm fine. You look very fresh this morning. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting up early if you had things and things there. <laughs> Hello, Barry. ไม่ได้ชื่ออะไรนะเพราะว่าเพราะว่าเพราะว่าเพราะว่าเพราะว่าเพราะว่าเพราะว่าเพราะว่าเพราะว่าเพราะว่าเพราะว่าเพราะว
Okay, Natasha. Lagi. Oh, Pak Nur, Pak Ari, Bu Patona, Mariam. Oke. Happy to see many beautiful um, students coming here. All right. <laughs> Natasha bisa di play profil Ukris supaya sambil ngisi ya. Terus uh, ini kan sudah live. Uh, ya share screennya udah nyala belum ya? Oke, okay. Bupatona perlu co-host? Oh ya udah ya. And I would like to check the speakers for today first. Uh, Ibu Siti Patona and then Pak Prasena sudah join ya. And then Miss Kuntala. Okay. Hi. Can you please unmute yourself? All right. Okay. And one more is Miss Anne coming. Miss um, Anne. I'm contacting her already. Okay. Yes. So she will join very soon. She will join very Ooh. soon. Bu Patona, Pak Pras minta tolong mahasiswanya diminta untuk segera join. Ini sudah jam 10. Oke. Okay. Oke, okay. anyone who come from NRRU University, would you please rename yourself? Indicate with NRRU underscore your name. And the participants... Uh, from Upgris, please also rename yourself with Upgris underscore your name. Okay. Number lima. Miss N. Okay. Okay, we will start very soon. Mm -hmm. So uh, please make sure you rename yourself um, according to the guidelines. Upgrade student, please rename with Upgrade underscore your name. Teman-teman dari Upgrade, minta tolong di rename supaya kelihatan ya afiliasinya Upgrade underscore namanya. Kemudian and then the students coming from NRRU, please rename yourself. นักศึกษาภาษาประเทศไทยลงชื่อเป็นภาษาอังกฤษและลงไทยด้วยนรอายูนะคะขอบคุณค่ะขอบคุณครับอืมยูลูกบิวติฟูลทูเดย์ um, <laughs> <laughs> <Beautiful today. Mariam. laughs> lovely as same as you we are beautiful okay <laughs> okay we are beautiful parif <laughs> 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 ready for today Ready, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, you can lower your camera because your face is cut until here. All right, good. Thank Sorry. you. Maryam, today you will giving opening speech. Yeah, today is going to be me. All right. And how about the closing? Also you? Yeah, I'm going to be from the beginning until the end. Okay. From Upgris, we have Dr. Noor Hidayat. Yes. Greetings, say hi to Dr. Noor already. All right. And all the other lectures from Upgris, okay, so I'm okay, saying hi right. from Thailand. Dah sembilan dua. Pak Aris, uh, bisa dimulai aja ya. Natasha mau opening sebentar enggak? Uh, profil upgrade-nya ditayangkan. Natasha di mana? Universitas PGRI Semarang is located in the culturally strong Semarang City, Central Java Province, Indonesia. 
With these features, Semarang is a potential place for students to develop themselves. The spirit that drives Universitas PGRI Semarang is nationalism and religiosity. Nationalism is the spirit to unite the nation in the midst of culture differences. We have seven faculties consist of Faculty of Education This faculty is the oldest faculty at our campus with the largest number of students. It has three study programs the Guidance and Counseling Study Program, Elementary School Teacher Education, and Early Childhood Development Teacher Education, Faculty of Social Science and Sports Education. There are several points that become our focus in this faculty. First, the value of humanism as national identity. Second, physical health as a support for quality education. Third, the understanding of economic values as a pillar of human civilization. This faculty has three study program, Pancasila and Citizenship Civil Education, Physical and Recreational Education, and Economic Education. Faculty of Language and Arts. This faculty provides education to generate language and art educators with pedagogical personal, social, and professional competence and competitive abilities in dealing with the current aid development in order to develop themselves into professionals such as translator, newscasters, or journalists by making use of their language and artistic skills. This faculty has three study programs, Indonesian language and literature education, English education, regional language, and Literature Education, Javanese Language. Faculty of Mathematics, Science, and Information Technology Education. This faculty has study programs of Mathematics Education, Biology Education, Physics Education, and Information Technology Education. The vision of this faculty is to be an excellent and distinguished faculty of Mathematics, Natural Science, Information Technology Education by 2025. Faculty of Engineering and Informatics established on April 17, 2014. This faculty has six study programs, namely Architecture, Mechanical Engineering, Civil Engineering, Electrical Engineering, Informatics, and Food Technology. Faculty of Economic and Business this faculty has a mission to be a faculty of economics and business that excels in the field of digital base, creative economics and business with a distinctive identity. Faculty of Law The Faculty of Law of University of Begir Ismarang is committed to develop legal knowledge and this is done, among others, by organizing seminars, discussions, comparative studies, and field experience practices. In order to support the teaching and learning activities, we have four complexes of campuses. Campus 1, located at Jalan Dr. Cipto Jalan Lontar. This campus consists of representative and modern buildings for teaching and learning activities. This campus consists of central building, main building, student activity center, library, graduate program building as well as a representative auditorium meeting hall for national class concerts and international seminars. Campus 2, located at Jalan Sriwijaya. This campus has a hotel available for both students and public in general as well as a large meeting room for teacher professional training programs and various other large-scale meetings. Campus 3, located at Jalan Bendan Duo. This campus has a building for students' practices, especially mechanical and electrical engineering department students. This campus supports various activities to increase electrical, mechanical, and architecture skills. Campus 4, located at Jalan Gajah. This campus has a teaching learning building complex and sports centers including basketball, badminton, futsal, 
and other athletic sports activities. This campus also has a dormitory building provided for students, as well as a high school laboratory school, which was established by the Universitas PGRI Semara. Why do you have to choose Ogris as a place to study? We realize the importance of international relations to connect the discourse currently developing in the international world. This is where we establish a collaboration to open up opportunities for career leader to students and lecture exchanges, credit transfer and double degree program, joint internship and research, and publication with our reputable university partners. We believe that in our fast-paced and competitive world, there are basic competencies every young generation has to possess, namely excellence and distinction. Excellence in either emotional and spiritual intelligence and the ability to retain the personality as a culture human being. Please join Ogris. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining the lecture series. Uh, this lecture series uh, is called by Universitas Tegeri Semarang in collaboration with uh, NLRU, Nakon Rajasima Rajabat University. Uh, gladly, all of you can join this meeting. And hopefully that all of you can gain the insightful knowledge on education because the four uh, keynote speaker are uh, expert in education. Let me read the rundown for this meeting. First is opening by Mr. Nur Hidayat from Universitas Pekiri Semarang and Dr. Waiwali Wai Chimli from Nakon Rajasima Rajapat University. Uh, and then a uh, national anthem from Indonesia and from Thailand. Uh, and then the first speaker is Dr. Siti Patonah from Universitas Tegeri Semarang. The second speaker is Ms. Skuntala uh, Promol from Nakhon Raja Sima University. The third speaker is uh, Mr. Pratina Aratianto from Universitas Tegeri Semarang. The fourth speaker is Ms. Ri Androsti Alim from Nakhon Raja Sima Rajapat University. After four speaker then their session, the next session is question and answer, and the last session is closing, photo, and announcement. Uh, let's start our lecture series, the, the opening with the national anthem from Indonesia and Thailand. Uh, Miss Natasha, can you help me share the national anthem?
Thank you, Natasha and Miss Nekweka for sharing the national anthem from Indonesia and from Thailand. Uh, now we will welcome Mr. Nur Hidayat to give his speech. Mr. Nur Hidayat. Thank you, uh, Pak Arif. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to extend my respect to Dr. Wai Wale, uh, in charge of coordinating this lecture program from on RRU. And also uh, the speaker, we have um, Ms. Sakuntala uh, Promo, uh, Ms. Suri Ann Rose from RRU, and also speaker from UPRIS. We have uh, Dr. Siti Fatona and uh, Prasena uh, Ariato, and also uh, the moderator, Pak Arif, and the coordinators of these lecture like, seminars in charge of in charge from Chris, who, uh, Dr. Meganovianti, and uh, the organizing committee of both university and uh, students, uh, the participants of this lecture like, series from uh, both university. Uh, on RRU and uh, Universitas Pekiri Semarang of Ukrish. Uh, secondly, uh, on behalf of Universitas Pekiri Semarang, I uh, would like to express our gratitude to RRU that we have moved forward uh, our collaborations from the C teacher. Uh, collaboration into further collaborations that uh, we are already conducting uh, today, yeah, lecture series. As we have already understood that uh, our uh, collaboration would be uh, formalized, as we have already planned before, by uh, the MOU signing uh, in the early December 2023. So uh, by the... <clears throat> Uh, MOU signing that would be conducted next month. We hope that uh, more collaboration could be conducted in the near future. Not only uh, students' mobility program, lectures mobility program, but also some other programs like uh, a joint research, joint collaboration, and some other fruitful collaborations that could be uh, done by NRIU and uh, UPRISC. And uh, this uh, lecture series program uh, <clears throat> marks the developments of uh, NRIU and UPRIS uh, collaborations into more intensive, extensive, and fruitful uh, collaborations. Uh, I believe that uh, this lecture uh, series program would greatly benefit uh, both uh, the lecturers and the students in both universities uh, in the sense that it will bring about more uh, conducive and uh, yeah, conducive uh, atmosphere academically in both universities as we could learn uh, uh, the good practices, the best practices from uh, both uh, NRIU and also UPRIS. And lastly, I would like to uh, say to all the participants of this joint uh, uh, this lecture series, I wish you a good uh, time and uh, enjoy the uh, lecture series from uh, the beginning to the end of this program. Thank you very much. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.
Hi everyone, สวัสดีค่ะ So on behalf of n a k o n r a j a s i m a r a j a p a t University, okay, my name is Dr. b a w a l i Bawshimpli. Okay, I was been honored to be able to build a friendship, not only getting to know you activities that running by the excellent lectures, but it's also To be able to build connecting academically between the two university, we living away from each other. It is gonna takes like um, a long journey to be able to in touch personally. But we had been honored, okay, two months ago, Dr. Mega come to visit our university, okay, and then we have um, a small talk with our president. In not only to send out the exchange students, but it's also to be able to exchange the knowledge between a scholar, the educators, and then also the lecturers from the university. It has been an honor for us to be able to start. Okay, we know that your university has been starting the. Um, lecture series, okay, with another university in Southeast Asia, and this is the first time of Nakhonrajasima r a j a p a t University, and of course, okay, we uh, speak the uh, standard Thai, and we see that language is still be a barrier, but we hope that with the knowledge and content that speaker has been prepared. We both can develop academic level and English skills, English ability among the lectures and the students at the same time. To us, today we has been supported by the speaker from Thailand, okay, from um, the students who are starting having a PhD career, career path. And then also one of the the teachers who's um, under the n a k o r o s i m a r a j p a t University School partner to be able to um, sharing the idea, the knowledge in the science education in Thailand. And on the other hand, we would like to hear from you as well that not only we can lift up in the knowledge of English communication. But it's also in the fields of sciences. So I wish these C teachers it's starting that we getting to know each other, but still more of the activity that we can contribute to each other. Like today, n a k o n r a j a s i m a r a j a p a t University start in joining you with the lecture series, and for more, okay, from the next year coming, we hope that. Not only the sciences program will join academically, but it also another program will enter to participate these wonderful activities amongst our two university as well. So we wish this event will be run successfully, okay, and hopefully that we can be able to bring up, okay, the knowledge that we share. To increase what we have and make the world of the science education in Southeast Asia better and greater. We shall luck to all the speakers and thank you very much from Ofkus in inviting n a k h o n r a j a s i m a r a j a p a t University to join the C and the Study teachers. Thank you. Thank you, Miss uh, Doctor Y. Valley w a t h i n The next session is for the first speaker, uh, Doctor Siti Patona m p d Allow me to read the curriculum f i t f o r s Her name is Doctor Siti Patona m p d m p d Her address is in Bawang Regency. 
yaitu itu proximal dengan awal from Semarang City. Uh, she completed her bachelor and master degree from Universitas Negeri Semarang, and she completed her doctorat in Universitas Negeri Solo. Uh, for her work experience, uh, she is actively as lecturer in elementary school program in Universitas Negeri Semarang. She is also a secretary for master program in natural science education in Universitas Negeri Semarang. Before that, he experienced in elementary school teacher, uh, junior high school teacher, uh, instructor PLPG, uh, and another work experiences. Her uh, journal, her articles uh, in Sokopus are six articles. Uh, she has created two book chapter uh, and seven books among others. So from the curriculum today, we know that she is very expert in his uh, in her expertise on natural science education. Now from the time, uh, I will give the first to give uh, her presentation. Thank you, Mr. Arif, for giving me the opportunity to present my papers. The Honorable Mr. Nur Hidayat, the Chief of International Office from Universitas PGR Semarang. The Honorable Dr. Waiwale. So funny and so happy, I think, today. <laughs> Every happy uh, from NRRU, Thailand. And also honorable for my fellow speaker, Miss Sakuntala Promo, and then Miss Ray and Rose V. Alim, and uh, to my colleague's partner, Mr. Prasena Aris Yanto, and almost a participant today. Allow me to start. Uh, this lecture series with the topic of STEM literacy, elementary school pre-service teacher reception. I want to share my presentation today. <clears throat> my son is clear, all participants. It's clear? Yes, perfect. Okay. Yes. Thank you, Mir. Yeah. <clears throat> this is uh, my topic about STEM literacy, elementary school, uh, pre service teacher reception. So, this uh, paper, uh, before I introduce what the topic, I will. Uh, describe or explain on the whole uh, research. Uh, STEM literacy is one of way to know uh, my students uh, have the literacy uh, about STEM. And then uh, after we, our students uh, learn about uh, STEM, uh, I will give uh, STEM literacy on final, uh, final, final research. Uh, actually, STEM literacy is one way to, uh, to get a STEM process. Uh, there are uh, we have a uh, two point, two point or two big uh, point to uh, STEM process. Firstly, is preparing and secondly EDP. EDP is mean um, engineering design process. For preparing, uh, our students uh, discuss and learn about how about science and then mathematics, technology, engineering, and 
what the kind of science, what kind of uh, mathematics, technology, and also engineering. After that, our students discuss about uh, Ministry of Education because a uh, pre-service teacher elementary school should be now what the uh, what the kind of uh, ministry of education especially science curriculum and mathematics from science and mathematics curriculum in ministry of education especially in elementary school our students analyze about what is the content and what is the competence after that our students know that uh, so many uh, so many materials so many subject material in science and also mathematics the third uh, the third step is product identified my student our student uh, choose uh, the one product based on technology and their group uh, and uh, they analyze what is the uh, profile about science should be now, what the mathematics formula should be now to uh, put this product, and then what is the technology and how to design uh, uh, before uh, this product uh, become. And after that, uh, our student uh, this activity is a uh, STEM activity. Uh, the name is uh, engineering design process. Engineering design process uh, consists of uh, six uh, activity. Firstly, brainstorming. Our students uh, discuss uh, uh, three points. The first is about what is uncomfort. Um, comfort. Uh, uh, and then number two is what the need. Uh, what the need yeah uh, to to uh, to go from uncomfort uh, situation and then uh, our student designing designing technology want to uh, to answer uh, uh, uncomfort uh, situation after that uh, my student uh, uh, looking for or uh, improve uh, their uh, design with uh, uh, with research uh, like journal and also from social media like uh, TikTok and also Instagram. Facebook is okay, no for men, but uh, our uh, every group should be have one of uh, journal, uh, uh, article journal. After that, uh, our student uh, create uh, the technology uh, based on uh, their design. After that, uh, from the uh, uh, technology should be answer the question when they brainstorming with applying. Uh, after that, how the applying is, uh, what is that? It's a benefit or no, it advantage or no, uh, should be evaluating. Now, all uh, overall from the activity, our students should be communicating what the product new uh, new product uh, 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 new product from uh, their uh, discussion. And after that, in final semester, our student give a STEM literacy. So actually, STEM literacy as a pre-test and post-test to our students. Uh, let I will describe about STEM. <clears throat> From the World Economic Forum, uh, uh, in 2020, uh, there are 10 Top ten, yeah. Top ten uh, ability uh, should be uh, individual have, namely the one is complex problem solving and then critical thinking, creativity, people management, coordinating with others, emotional intelligence, judgment and decision, service orientation and negotiations, and finally cognitive flexibility. And 2025, and the same uh, forum have 10 top two, but uh, is uh, uh, difficult, uh, so very complex. 
purposely about analytical thinking and innovation. Secondly, active learning and learning strategies. Third, a complex problem solving. And four, critical thinking and analysis, Creativ creativity, originality and initiative, leadership and social influence, technology use, monitoring and control, technology design program, uh, resolution, stress tolerance, and flexibility. And finally, reasoning problem solving. And we now, uh, this in box, uh, it's box, uh, red box, uh, is uh, correlated with the STEM. And what is in the STEM? Yeah, STEM uh, actually related cars are in high demand. A job based on STEM and job non-STEM is different. Uh, uh, job based on STEM uh, is in high demand as technology continues to advance and then the need for professional in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics fields is expected to grow. STEM-related occupation often offer competitive salaries and job stability. So STEM is should be have uh, our student. What is STEM and STEM literacy? STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics in education refers to integrated, uh, interdisciplinary uh, fields, yeah? uh, teaching and learning that emphasizes the interconnected nature of these four disciplines. Uh, the goal is to prepare students with the knowledge, skill, and mindset need to succeed in a rapidly evolving technology driven world. What is in the sign in STEM? Sign is enforced to the study of the natural world, including biology, chemistry, basic, environmental science, and other scientific disciplines. Technology encompasses the use of tools, machines, systems, and techniques for solving problems or accomplishing tasks. This include information technology and a broad range of technology application. Engineering involves the application of scientific and mathematical principles to design and build systems, structures, devices, and process to address challenge and meet human needs. And mathematics involves the application of scientific and mathematical principle to design and build systems, structures, device, and process to address challenges and meet human needs. So uh, we uh, need uh, how to uh, children know about STEM. The name is STEM literacy. So STEM literacy refers to the ability to understand, apply, and integrate science, technology, engineering, and mathematics in various contexts. Uh, so uh, there are building blocks of STEM literacy, uh, science literacy, technology literacy, engineering literacy, and mathematics literacy. Method. Uh, this is a research, uh, especially for uh, STEM literacy, is a descriptive survey method using a convenient sampling strategy. Uh, the study was conducting using uh, the study group with was assigned comprised uh, 339 Seven great elementary school preschool teacher uh, conceived to two hundred and uh, eighteen one women and uh, 40, 48 men in Universitas PGRI Semarang academic year two thousand and twenty three. Uh, data collection tool used G form and then uh, the instrument adopted from STEM literacy from one appear on 2021 the instrument was validated with language expert judgment uh, the instrument consists of 28 items divided into for namely science technology engineering and mathematics uh, this item used the Likert scale with five choice strongly disagree to strongly agree Data were analyzed using frequency, percentage, and 
uh, case square test uh, and also mean with new and fire waste comparison to know what uh, the uh, what is that correlate yeah correlate uh, background and stem literacy our student and that's about uh, demography our student uh, the of uh, X uh, about 19 to 25 and senior high school background in our country we have uh, five yeah, five uh, five uh, five kind yeah uh, senior high school background natural science social science English religion and vocation. Uh, there are items on uh, item and on science uh, seven question uh, there are uh, from one to seven uh, we know that uh, from seven question or uh, question seven I have a good attitude towards using scientific process to solve problem and work in daily life uh, have a strong agree yeah uh, uh, what uh, agree agree uh, from our student. How about the second item in technology? Uh, from uh, item technology, uh, we know from uh, uh, the question is 30, I use different technology regularly depending on the type of work. This has a strong agree from uh, our students. And then uh, item on engineering, uh, our student uh, give a uh, strong agree when uh, in 17 uh, question, but uh, it's from uh, 18, I think broken things myself without help from other uh, have uh, the same uh, beside uh, neutral and agree. And finally, mathematics. Uh, I think from mathematics, our student uh, the same uh, the same answer about uh, agree for this uh, uh, seven question. And then there are uh, totally uh, answer for our student from science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. We know that. Uh, Technology have the highest score uh, other than. And then uh, there are about, how about uh, boys and girl or men and women about STEM literacy using uh, IDN independent sample men with new U test. And uh, from this uh, test, we know that uh, significancy is a uh, point zero one uh, uh, point zero uh, 0.015. Uh, it's mean uh, that the value of significant uh, low than alpha, there are significant STEM literacy difference between male and female student. And uh, the main ring, it can be said that the main ring of STEM literacy of male student uh, is higher than the main rank of STEM literacy of female. So it can be concluded that male students have better STEM literacy than female students. And uh, especially for about the background of a student and how about the STEM literacy, we use the two uh, tests. The name is uh, Pyre with comparison and mean with new. Uh, and from these uh, two tests, the same uh, conclusion that uh, there are conclusion. Uh, firstly, students who create from social studies have better STEM literacy than students uh, who create from science majors. It, uh, I think it's very uh, well, yeah, uh, unexpected yeah, that, that uh, uh, our student STEM literacy have uh, the, the high uh, literacy for social studies than uh, science studies. Secondly, studying students graduating from science and other majors have STEM literacy that is not significantly different. Students who graduate from the vocational department uh, have better STEM literacy than students 
who graduate from the science department. So uh, from science department is lower than uh, uh, social uh, studies and also vocational department. And fourthly, students graduating from social studies in and others have STEM literacy that is not significantly different. Five students who graduate from school studies and vocational major have STEM literacy that is not significantly different. And finally, students graduating from other and vocational majors have STEM literacy that is not significantly different. Mr. Arif, how about my time? Okay. Okay, okay, okay. I want to uh, give uh, my student activity. Uh, what is that? My student activity in our uh, classroom. What is that? Okay. That's uh when the first uh, activity our students should be uh brainstorming brainstorming what the technology want to create and also want to uh discuss uh about uncomfort and also what they need. There are uh from uh five uh group. Uh, uh, from five group discuss about they want to uh uncomfort about uh uh food and then about uh food and communication yeah and there uh, our student uh, choose the about the uh food to discuss uh create the technology after our student brainstorming there are uh, uh, our student have about uh, especially for five group there are have about 26 uh, uh, communication or 26 uh, chat yeah, from uh, this group uh, is very high than the other group and after that, uh, our student move to design. How to design uh, should be uh, discussed about what the design and also what the information like that uh, from article journal and also from social media and also what the kind to make it and how to procedure to make it uh, and also what uh, how many charge to make it. And after that, uh, our students should be now what the profile uh, to uh, science and then mathematics uh, and then technology and also how to design in engineering. And finally, our students should be have uh, what is that to uh, summary uh, the idea in uh, infographics uh, using Canva or etc. Uh, this is our presentation, Mr. Arif. I think enough. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, thank you, uh, Mrs. Citi Patona, uh, for the insightful uh, presentation about uh, STEM, Science, Technology, Engineering, and Mathematics. Now we enter the second presenter let me read her curriculum vitae uh, her full name is miss kuntala from yes uh, she has done uh, several training uh, stop Asia Youth Leader Training Court Soka Gakai International in New Delhi, India in 2017. Uh, English for Academic Purpose Program in 2015 in Brisbane, Queensland, Australia. TESOL Young Learner Program in 2015. Soka Gakai International in Tokyo, Japan in 2013. Soka Gakai International in Tokyo, Japan in 2008. 
International Student Action Program in 2004 in University of Kentucky, USA. Her uh, education background, uh, he, she has the she finishes bachelor in science in Asrat University, Nakhon Patom, Thailand, in 2005. She finished her Master of Food Science and Technology in 2011 from Prince of Songkla University. And she acquired teaching license, Diploma in Teaching Profession Program in 2013 from Hatay University, Songkla, Thailand. And the latest is elementary course at AMI Trainee in 2018 from Montes Story Training and Research Trust di Durabat, Telangana, India. And for her work history, work of variant, uh, researcher assistant uh, uh, from 2006 up to 2009, Science teacher in Tamrong Watana Patanaya Wachon School, 2011 up to 2015. English and Science teacher for Bumong Ruam Patana School, 2015 until 2016. English Integrated Language, Biology and Food Science teacher from Lokpanya School, 2016 until 2011. And the latest, 2019 up to now. Science teacher for elementary, head of primary department, Tejawit School, Nakhon Rajasthima, Thailand. Uh, that is for her curriculum today. Now the time uh, and the screen is for Miss Sukuntala Pomon. Okay, thank you very much for Mr. Muhammad Arif. <laughs> oh, sorry for man. my uh, CV is quite long okay um and first of all good morning or my honorable audience i'm very appreciate and so excited to join this series uh -huh. and thank you very much uh, dr city i really enjoy your um presentation so stem is really helpful for our kids especially uh we can construct the uh, the kind of scientific uh, idea for the kids. Huh? Thank you very much. Huh? So, first of all, let me introduce myself a little bit. Huh? So, you you all know that uh, from the MC, I am current. Uh, my name is Sakuntala Pomoon. Huh? Or the short name is Sandy. Huh? You can call me Sandy. Huh? So, and I'm currently the uh, science teacher and head of primary department in Seishowitz School which whole school English program uh, in Korat. We are the first school and I think now we are still the first school in Korat that run by English program in the whole school. In our school, we use English for 80%. Uh, the kids speak English almost all the time, uh, just only Thai languages. Uh, oh, sorry, just only uh, Thai, Thai subject that they can speak Thai. Uh, and moreover, now I'm a PhD candidate of graduate school, Nakhon Rajasima, Rajapat University. I'm very grateful to Dr. Wawali to invite me for joining this series. I very appreciate and so excited as you can see from my voice. So before we jump to the topic, as I will present to you guys today, okay, this is my uh, slide. Uh -huh. So for our for presentation today, so my topic is about science teachers will go on learning management for primary classroom. Okay, this one is my my information. <laughs> yes. Okay, so first of all, I would like to uh, introduce to you guys a little bit of my inspiration quote that I have read for many years. This is from the Miss, Mr. Junet Saburo Makimuzi. Uh -huh. He is one of the Japanese ex educators. So he said, education should encourage youth 
to realize their future's potential and to display their unique individuality with enthusiasm and vigor. So today for my presentation, so I would like, I, I will focus about the learning management. So for learning management, according to my 10 year experiences as a teacher and a science teacher for primary st students, I think the learning management on my view consists of three factors, which are learning environment, active classroom, and the last one that I think also very important is interaction between students and teachers. Okay, for learning environment, the environment influences the ongoing learning experience. Having a healthy environment to stay to study can help the learners develop a better knowledge of what they have learned. Mm -hmm. And this is my classroom. This is my classroom now today. So of course, because it's primary level, right? So now I teach grade one to grade to grade six. Um, that it is approximately seven years old to 12 years old. And this is our science classroom. Okay, so you can see that. So I try to set up the environment to inspire them. Okay, to inspire them in terms of because they are the, they are the young kids, right? So if we put um, many texts, or it's probably for the young kids, it's a little bit mm, boring for them. So I set up the environment, as you can see, the human model, which is the first time they a little bit afraid. But the thing, the more they come to science room, the more they be, make friends with our, <laughs> with our human model. Okay. okay, this is the shelf. We provide many uh, equipment for them that relate to the science, relate to their experiment. Okay. So, and this one you can see the, okay, I would like to emphasize about these pictures. Okay. This is our, I, I asked them to do the project about the DIY recycled materials. And I asked them to uh, create some useful things from the the uh, recycled materials. And this is the products. Actually, it's from the last semester, semester one. Now we just start the semester two. So this one, the, I, this is the, the kids idea to create uh, the new products that come from the reused material. And after they finish the project, I put the, their product inside the classroom. Because I want them to see this is uh, their work is valuable, okay? And they always uh, when we when we finish the semester and we have the new student, they always appreciate the the previous batch that oh, um, uh, G six last year doing the great work, and the younger one also inspired from the previous batch as well. Ah, the next one, the next factor that also important is active classroom. So I believe that active classroom helps the learner to re retain knowledge in a meaningful way, especially hand hands-on activities, offer more engagement and provide more fun to the classroom. Moreover, this approach also supports for construction the essential skill of 21st century as uh, Dr. Siti said, STEM as well. STEM is integrate, uh, is an integrated polygram, right? And also we probably, uh, not just only the classroom, the activity that we done, that we have done in the class also need to motivate the kids to, to appreciate about science. Because some of them, when we say, okay, this is science subject, they will get, oh, it's going to be hard, right? But we need to make it um, fun, more fun. Uh -huh. And because I refer to the 21st century skill, actually, if we can categorize the 21st century skill into three, three parts, so we all know that. And all of this, 
if we can uh, set up the environment, also create the active classroom, all of this can happen. But it's not can ha it cannot happen in one day. Uh, everyone knows. It's the long-term process. And it's the long-term plan to make it happen. Uh -huh. We can see the result later. So this one is this picture. I would like to show you this because you can see that the kids, this one we learn about, this is from last semester. We have learned about the parts of flowers. So I asked the kids to bring, to brought some flower from their home. And then before we jump to the lesson, we, sorry, before we jump to the activities, I uh, introduce them first. What are the parts of flowers? And then after that, I ask them to um, like uh, try to uh, in, uh, indicate each, each part of the flower. Uh, we ask the kids to engage. I ask them to bring the flower from their home. So, of course, they have different flowers and they can enjoy and they really enjoy for this activity. And they can, some of them never know about hibiscus. How's the hibiscus flower look like? Or even flower, okay? So, because they are in the city, of course. So, we need to provide something that they, it's like a give more experience from them, for, for them. Okay, so, and this is my class. This is great. Red four. Uh -huh. They really enjoy for this. So, and the result, this is the result that after they finish the try to separate each part of their flower, they can, they now can, they, they can notice that, oh, what, what are the function of each part? And look at this. <laughs> this is a frog. Okay. So from this picture, can you guess what lesson that I deliver to my kids? Actually, it's about uh, animal classification. And some of them quite confused between amphibian and reptile because in the characters, the characteristic of both groups, it's quite similar. So, and this one, we all have the cooperation with some parents. Uh, the parents uh, tell me to find frog and then I asked the kids to touch it. I didn't force them for sure. And I just asked them that, would you like to try to touch? And you will know the skin of amphibian is totally different from reptile. Okay. And actually not all of them touch is fine. Uh, but most of them, not most of them try to touch. And it's okay. Of course they feel disgusting, right? But they really enjoy and then this, I mean, when they touch something, when they use their hand to touch something, to do any activity, it will fix in their, in their mind that, okay, when you think about amphibian, this is the skin of amphibian, think about frog, okay? So, and after that, of course, I ask them to wash their hands. <laughs> okay, and the last factors that are very important in nowadays, because why I mentioned in now today because um, I think the kids need more strong bonding with the teacher. Uh -huh. This factor, students and teacher interaction. I believe that teachers play important role for being a public servant to offer guidance to the young learner. The public servant, it doesn't mean we need to serve them in every uh, situation. But we need to guide them. We need to train them to be the good learner. To and we need to inspire them to uh, explore the world. Of course, not all the kids uh will be the scientists, or they not all the kids like science. I I I think not all of them love science. But the thing is, I just would like to. I just would like, I just would like them to have the happy time when they learn, when they come to my class. Because when we are happy, our mind is open. We can, we can collect many things. I believe that. Uh -huh. So, and this is when they do, when they did the experiment, 
you can see this my and this is me นะคะ <laughs> okay so ah uh, for this picture I show you they learn about light I make them I ask them to make their storytelling from the shadow shadow storytelling นะคะ okay so and that's all for my presentation I hope you enjoy um and this is just my view okay just from my view that uh environment is very important the active classroom very important and also the interaction the healthy the healthy relationship between teacher and student uh -huh. because I, i i just would like to add up some more information we we cannot uh deny that now some some student they probably struggle with the family problems but if they they, they might they might not can share some issue to their parents but of course i believe that if they can trust teacher they, we they they gonna uh, share some some problem some of their problems to us and at that moment you can encourage them you can inspire them or even you can um clap them down to any situation that they are that they are facing or okay so that one is my wheel ha thank you very much ha. thank you very much miss kuntala promo or like the nickname miss sandy yeah a uh, very insightful presentation about uh, classroom management uh, there are three factors three elements uh, the first is learning environment the second is active classroom and the third uh, interaction between student and teacher and in the closing we said that the most important is uh, interaction between uh, student and teacher uh, now we will go to the third session uh, Mr. Prasena Arsianto, I will read his curriculum vitae. Uh, he, uh, her, his education background. He finished his bachelor degree in dance education in uh, Universitas Negeri Semarang. He finished his master degree at art education in uh, the same campus, Universitas Negeri Semarang. And his position right now is the journal editor for Rawasan Pendidikan and Pendidik dan Profesi Pendidik. Uh, he has done some publication uh, about gen education and art education. The first is development of learning media for most of our song in 2021. Uh, development of children's song as educational media in 2023. Form of the Barongan Kusumo Suyo Performan in the Regency in 2023. And he also actively uh, participated in seminar and workshop as speaker uh, in Gen Body Work Workshop, Classical Gen Workshop, Art Education to Form Self Identity, Identity, Writing Scientific Article and Journal Publication. And he acquired some copyright from Menang Mojo. March of Art Song Learning in 2021, BTPT Dance in 2023, Do Not Do Their Dance in 2023. Uh, that is his curriculum vitae. Now the time as the screen is for Mr. Prasina. Okay, thank you Mr. Arif uh, for giving me the opportunity. Uh, good morning everybody. It's still morning, right? <laughs> Okay, uh, the Honorable uh, Dr. Nur Hidayat, the Chief of International Office, Universitas PKRI Semarang, the Honorable Dr. Huay Wale from Nakhon Rajasimah Rajabat University, the Honorable Miss Sakuntala Promol, Miss Rian Rosvi Alim, uh, my partner, Miss Dr. Siti Patona, and uh, all of his lecture participants. Uh, nice to meet you all. <coughs> okay. Uh, Okay, uh, today uh, I will talk about uh, art integration in learning at elementary school and I think my paper is still uh, connect with uh, Miss Skuntala paper, yeah. 
and uh, uh, I'm sure that Miss Kuntala uh, has uh, implement uh, art education and art integration in learning. But uh, I will talk in other approaches. Yeah, in, uh, I talk in uh, education uh, art education paradigm. Okay, I will uh, share screen. <clears throat> Is my screen uh, success, Mr. Arif? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> okay, uh, uh, brother and sister, yeah, I call you brother and sister. Uh, <clears throat> uh, today, I want to talk about art integration in learning at elementary school. So, so uh, of course, when Okay, when we discuss uh, about uh, art integration and learning, we cannot be separated. Uh, we can separate it from uh, the art education paradigm. Yes, uh, we can understand that the goals of art education from two things. The first is uh, art education, which aims to be a process of preserving, inheriting, and developing art. <clears throat> Children are uh, specifically trained to study art technically and philosophically. The goal is uh, children able to become a good artist and uh, uh, the art can continue to develop. <clears throat> These goals uh, can be found in art schools, uh, art studio, and art group in society. Uh, you can uh, see in the uh, left uh, uh, in the left picture, <clears throat> uh, there is a barongan, the map. <clears throat> Okay. <clears throat> okay, and then uh, the section is uh, art education also has uh, the aim of developing students' potential and character through art. This goal is contextual and can be found in the learning process in elementary school. Yeah. Students uh, are not directed to become artists because uh, every children has different potential. But uh, through art, uh, children' potential and character can be developed. For example, uh, students' creative potential, uh, cooperative cooperation and communication skills. And uh, today in this discussion, uh, we will focus on this goal. Yeah. <clears throat> students' potential and character through us. <clears throat> yeah. okay. uh, Ki Hajar Dewantoro, yeah, one of uh, the educational figures in Indonesia, said that uh, the aim of education is to smooth or uh, refine the feelings, make the mind smart, and make the body healthy. <clears throat> so, uh, the learning uh, does not only focus on cognitive mastery or knowledge, but but also effect, uh, affective and psychomotor aspect uh, must also receive attention in learning. And art education is able to hone the strength of the human soul, uh, like thought, uh, feelings, and will. <clears throat> because a uh, Art is multidimensional and combines the ability to think, feel, and skill. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Implementation of uh, art education can be carried out in two activities. The first is art appreciation. Yeah. In this activity, uh, students are given the opportunity to uh, recognize, observe, uh, feel, uh, practice, and give their opinions about art. Uh, the the goal is that uh, students have the ability to appreciate, to appreciate or respect uh, ourselves, yeah, respect each other, and then 
uh, love uh, the culture, the environment, the country. So uh, I think it can reduce a negative phenomena at school such as uh, bullying and brawls. <clears throat> And then uh, the second activity is uh, artistic creation. After being able to uh, appreciate, students are then given the opportunity to express uh, their ideas by creating artwork. In the creation process, of course, uh, students will use thinking, feeling, emotional, and skill abilities to produce a work. The aim of creative activities is to familiarize students with creative thinking so uh, they have the creative abilities that are so needed today <clears throat> this creative activity doesn't focus on the result of their work but uh, focus uh, on the process carried out and experienced by children to produce original ideas and works <clears throat> okay uh, maybe uh you are thinking that uh, I'm not uh, an art teacher, yeah? Uh, how can I apply art education in elementary school? <clears throat> okay, uh, the three concepts in art is learning. This <clears throat> concept of integration can be I think I can implement by teachers uh, because uh, we, uh, we must remember again that the is student potential and character, not only on art skill. <clears throat> and then uh, the first is uh, learning, art. learning with art occurs when uh, they are a way to study about particular nah, uh, we only, we only uh, borrow art to study other material but do not focus on the art material itself uh, for the example is uh, the first yeah <clears throat> why can human move uh, let's uh, look at the following video <clears throat> Okay, uh, brother and sisters, yeah. Uh, this is, uh, I think, the first example how to connecting uh, dance with the, uh, uh, how to integrate yeah, art in learning. Uh, the first is uh, connecting dance with material of the human movement system. Yeah. Why can humans move? Uh, one of the reasons is because we are have uh, moving joints, yeah. They are. Uh, many types of join in our body. The uh, teacher can give an example of a movement in dance. Then uh, the teacher can use the inquiry learning model and guide students in investigation. Students are given the opportunity to uh, discover various uh, joints in their body and explain them with movement. In this case, yeah, uh, teacher not focus on dense material. Yeah. Teacher only uh, borrow dense material to explain about uh, human moving joints. And also the students, yeah. The students uh, only borrow dense uh, to explain uh, the result of their discussion about various uh, various joints in their body. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, this is uh, like that. <clears throat> And then uh, the next is uh, we can uh, introduce uh, various uh, shapes to students, yeah, <clears throat> uh, such as uh, flat shapes, uh, letter numbers, yeah, using uh, dense floor patterns. <clears throat> uh, 
uh, in this learning, the teacher can give an uh, example, maybe uh, using uh, three students to uh, form a triangle or to form strike line, diagonal. <clears throat> and then uh, with different groups, uh, students uh, were given the task uh, to find uh, various shapes such as uh, squares, triangles, circles, um, letters, yeah, like A, A, O, T, and then uh, numbers like uh, so on. So uh, this uh, this material maybe can integrate it with uh, mathematics, yeah, mathematics material. Uh, how to uh, learn about uh, two dimensi uh, shapes, yeah, or various shapes uh, to students. <clears throat> Ah, uh, and then uh, uh, and then uh, we can also collaborate uh, dance and music, uh, or uh, just use uh, music. Yeah, uh, this is uh, what the song look like. Uh, I'll sing it. Uh, <clears throat> the title is Who Am I? Okay, then, uh, the sing uh, the song is uh, I have two round ears. I have a long tail. Can you guess me? I like bananas. I hang in a tree. Can you guess me? And then, uh, maybe uh, the student can song, yeah, can sing this song. And then, uh, the friends, uh, the other students can guess. Uh, what is uh, who am I? Or can you guess me? Uh, <clears throat> in this uh picture, yeah, you can see a monkey, and then. Uh, still with uh, the same uh, song, yeah. Uh, I have two long ears. I have a short tail. Can you guess me? I like sweet carrots. I have big front teeth. Can you guess me? Uh, who am I? Uh, <clears throat> I am a rabbit. Uh, like that. Uh. Then, uh, I think, uh, of course, I think it will be more interesting when explained with songs. Rather than a uh, teacher explaining it textually, uh, like uh, this is a monkey, he has a long tail, uh, likes hanging from trees and eating fruits. Uh, <clears throat> I think uh, it's more interesting when uh, the students can uh, learning and play, play and learning. Yeah, like that. <clears throat> and then uh, this is uh, my team research in 2022. Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, we develop uh, children's songs, and one of the song titles is Guess the Animal. I'll sing it in Indonesia. Yeah. Yeah, punya, ya? Oh, yeah. Aku punya seekor binatang, kaki besar dan hidungnya panjang, mata kecil dan telinga lebar. Cobalah tebak kawan apa namanya. <tuh> Uh, brother and sister from Ugris, uh, I think can yeah guess the animal yeah. Uh, <clears throat> it is uh, Mr. Arif <laughs> yeah <laughs> the elephant and then and then the second lyric yeah. Aku punya seekor binatang punya julukan si raja rimba makan daging dan bertaring tajam. Cobalah tebak kawan apa namanya. Nah, it is lion ya. Gajah dan singa itu binatang hidupnya bebas di hutan-hutan. Ayo kawan sayangi binatang. Jagalah selalu hutan dan lestarikan. Nah, I think uh, it is the same ya. The 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 first song in English and uh, the second song in Indonesia. <coughs> But in other uh, arrangement yeah in in different arrangement and in different language <clears throat> okay and then uh, the second concept is uh, learning through art uh, learning through art uh, does not only use art as learning material but uses art as a medium to achieve educational goals art not only provide artistic experiences but also helps students to develop in emotional intelligence 
cognitive and affective uh, abilities. <clears throat> so uh, once again, it's uh, emphasized that art is used as a medium for developing students' potential and character like this. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> Like and uh, through dance learning, uh, students uh, are trained to be able to have a four C competencies, yeah, four C competencies in twenty uh, first uh, century uh, that are have to uh, they to be able to think critically, communicate uh, with other people, uh, collaborate or work in a team, and uh, produce creative work. <clears throat> nah, like that, yeah. <clears throat> Uh, the ability to dance is not uh, the first uh, the first goal yeah but how to uh, improve yeah how to improve how to develop students potential and character through art yeah, this is uh, that I mean <clears throat> and then the third concept is uh, learning about art uh, students uh, also can learn about history value of uh, the art and then uh, artist uh, figure yeah. <clears throat> for students uh, who have uh, talent and interest uh, more in the arts teacher can direct them to take part in more uh, specific arts learning for example taking part in arts extracurriculars so uh, students uh, can learn more deeply about how to dancing how to singing how to drawing, uh, how to write uh, poetry, uh, how to uh, uh, about drama, and so on. Okay, and okay. Uh, well, that's uh, my present uh, my presentation. Uh, to close this, uh, let me sing uh, Mochopat. Yeah, this is a traditional Japanese song. If usually Mr. Arif close uh, his uh, presentation with poem, so I'll. Uh, uh, close my presentation with a song, yeah, a traditional Japanese song. Sekar mo cepat kocong semarangan laras pelok patat limo. Ngelmu iku kalakone kanti laku lek Selawan kas tegesikas nyantosani setio budio pange kesing turang koro. Okay, uh, thank you for uh, brother and sister. Good, uh, good morning, yeah. <laughs> it's still morning, yeah. <laughs> I'll return it to Mr. Arif. Thank you, Mr. Arif. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Prasena. What a beautiful song, Semarang song, Mochopat song. Uh, the meaning is very uh, profound. Uh, Mr. Prasena has presented uh, his material about the art integration in learning at elementary school. Uh, the integration can be done through three concepts. The first is learning with the art. Second is learning through the art. The third concept is learning about the art. And the other subject that can be integrated with uh, art education is such as uh, the material of depth in mathematics subject or humanity subject. The body movement material in for biology or natural science. Uh, now we go to the fourth session. Uh, the fourth session with Miss Rian Rosti Alin. Uh, I will read uh, her curriculum first. Uh, she finished. Sorry. She finishes uh, her bachelor in secondary education in biological science in University of Southern Mindanao. Uh, she finishes the, her senior high school in Esperanza National High School. She is expertise in advocacy and research, interdisciplinary collaboration, lesson planning, 
laboratory management incorporate strategies to promote safe, responsible, and ethical use of ICT in learning and teaching. Uh, her experience, her work experience from 2017 to 2018 uh, as student teacher in Tulunan National High School, Tulunan North, Kota Batu. Uh, in 2020 until 2021, as science teacher in Mari Wittaya School. 2021 up to now, is science teacher at Suranari Wittaya School. Uh, that is uh, her curriculum vitae. Now I give time and screen to Miss Rian Rut. Hello everyone. Good morning. Yeah, Good morning. I really enjoy um, the presentations of my co-speakers today. So also, um, I'm so glad because uh, it's just only for my three years of um, teaching experience, but I gain a lot of information coming from you guys. So um, I want to um, share my screen first. Okay. There you go. Can you see it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So it's so nice to be a part of this um, lecture series. I just want to um, give you some input about my um, experience here in Thailand um, teaching science um, subject. So I will just tackle the challenges and innovation. So we are all um, teachers and um, researchers as well as professionals here, right? So we are, um, you know, we have the most um, or the best jobs in the world, <laughs> right? So we shape the knowledge and the mind of our students. So. Um, here, um, it's very fun to, you know, to work with the students because you are um, having different kinds of their um, learning styles. They are have different um, behaviors. Some of them are funny, energetic, creative, and insightful, right? So as a teacher, we also feel that we are young at heart, <laughs> right? So um, here... I want to ask some questions. Um, how to implement innovative educational techniques to transform the secondary science education system in our country, not just only um, here in Thailand, but in um, other um, nations. So um, here, and what makes a good teacher great? Okay, so as a teacher, we're not just... Um, just um, someone who teach, right? Um, we also um, a person or a teacher that follows instructions as well. So those instructions that we're teaching to the students is based on the curriculum, right? So I have here um, one um, questions from the student. Okay, so if a single teacher can teach us all the subjects, then how we could expect our single student to learn all the subjects. Now, the challenge is from the teacher itself, right? So the learning experience and the um, real life situation might be intangible for the students or for the teachers due to um, pre and in conditioning, such as unfamiliarity of the subject matter um, and structured learning activities. And of course, the most crucial part is the inadequate preparation of the materials and um, the curriculum per se, right? So uh, for me, the challenging part as a teacher here is how I can cope up with various ways to spice it up and become more active um, learning. So here are some examples of the key challenges. First and foremost, um, here um, for aligning lessons to the curriculum, because as a teacher, right, we want to ensure that um, our learning strategies or teaching strategies align with the existing curriculum um, in our um, nation. So the curriculum standards that we have. So we make sure that we develop the interdisciplinary approaches that connects um, subject matter concepts to the real world application. Okay, and next one, we have um, teaching, uh, teacher training and uh, professional development. 
Okay, I just want to um you know um grateful. I'm I I'm grateful here in Thailand because for um the teaching training and professional development, they really invest in the comprehensive um training program for us to be like more familiarized with their curriculum and um gain new techniques that we can um, use in our classroom. Next uh, one for the inclusive education. So for inclusive um, education, um, usually um, the students, they have the, like different learning styles, again, um, learning um, adaptability. So it's very um, hard for the teachers to, to know one by one, right, um, each of the learning styles of the students. So as a teacher, um, it's very um, hard to um, let or help students um, engage with our lessons without knowing their um, learning styles and behavior. And for sustainability, so this is uh, one of the challenge because um, we, uh, we know, right, that the only uh, constant in the world is change. So we usually change our um, strategies, learning styles, and um, um, approaches, right? But um, here, for transforming education, um, educational curriculum, and... Um, and help the students to become more globally competitive, we must um, develop a long-term plan for sustaining the innovative practices beyond our you know, personal and initial implementations of the subject matter. And of course, lack of resources. This is like a very common thing for us teacher, right? Because we want to um, uh, engage in more um, active learning um, strategies. So for example, um, you will like conduct an experiment, right? Um, and there's um, limited resources. So uh, one thing that you could um, think is that what are the available materials that can um, satisfy um, the needs of the students to do um, a certain activities? So um, aside from the key challenges uh, we have here, um, the key elements to have an effective instruction. Okay, so I list the five important things. We need to make sure that um, we need to um, coherent the set of standards and the curriculum based on our um, subject matter. And then teachers also must have the high capacity to teach in their um, field of disciplines. And support system of assessment and accountability coming from the higher, um, higher, um, for example, um, the, the, um, the, when we say like high capacity and um, teach in their um, uh, discipline with the support from their, um, from the heads, from the support from the schools, principals. And that's will come up with a supportive system of assessment and accountability. We need to make sure that we can assess the, um, the student learning. And we also need to be accountable that we give, um, we give, um, what do you call that? We give um, precise and accurate information based on how we grade the students. And of course, um, adequate instructional time and um, equal access to a high quality learning opportunity. So we want to, um, to incorporate the idea that no student left behind in learning, especially science, right? So in science, we, we really, um, if you like find it so boring, and you might think that you will um, learn that one from a wrong teacher. Do you agree that? Do, do you agree with that? <laughs> so um, um, I know um, each of us have different um, methods and um, approaches used in our classroom because I believe that there's really no best method methodologies and approaches in teaching, right? So for that, we come up with the innovative um, approaches and methodologies. I know that you're already particular with the inquiry base, 
project-based learning, STEAM integration, gamification, outdoor education, cultivate critical thinking, and flip classroom. So for um, inquiry-based learning, of course, we just like elicit the and integrate the um, questionings or the KWL for the students. For projects, uh, project based learning, um, we here emphasize to integrate projects in um, curriculum that students to work in real world problems. So, yeah, and games, of course. So, uh, we um, use um, different um, websites and applications to become more um, and uh, more active. So here are some of the materials and a uh, website that I use for the um, stimuli, um, um, stimulating students' um, eagerness. I use um, Python, right? I, um, for, for example, if we want to have like um, an experiment but we don't have that material, we can use Python for stimulation and simulation techniques. Um, pieces, Blue Cat, Kahoot, those are the apps or website that I use um, for eliciting um, formative um, learning for uh, questions, um, games, lectures. So I uh, use that one in the form of games. And of course, I also um, let the student use the best um, AI tools. Right. So because we are already in, in the 21st century, right, and we need to be more equipped in using technology. So, yeah, integration of um, technology is very crucial for us because we want to use as well the um, technologies in ethical manner. Right. And of course, um, here in um, our school, at Suranari Vitaya School, um, under English program, we also use um, games activities to foster students' knowledge and um, build and um, help them improve uh, in terms of their um, learning style. So games, um, some of them we use like a flip um, classroom techniques and we let them really speak and we let them like ask questions. Because as teacher, right? Um, as teacher, we really want to be more interactive. So what will happen um, if like we want to be more interactive once the students try to ask us question like, oh wait, <laughs> um, um, did you like, you didn't listen to what instruction given, something like that. So like sometimes we felt op offended. So as a teacher, we need also to cater all of the questions and after that, let them think let them think of what are the possible answers to their questions. So our rules here, rule here is to um, help them, um, help them um, engage with their own learning and facilitate them as well. So here are some examples of the activities that we have for our science exhibition. Um, we have also um, uh, outdoor um uh, learning, for example, if we have like a field trips. So uh, what I did is like uh, whatever we uh, see or um, experience, I always relate the one with our science subject. So example, um, if you want, um, if you let the students uh, go to science exhibitions and do some stuff, let them experience and um, do that one by itself, right? So because I know that um, with the um, idea that we learn by doing it. So that's learning by doing. So to summarize for transforming um, um, curriculum and transforming method methodologies and approach, um, as teachers, we really need to research, research what are the possible and applicable methods that we can use Right, we should need to develop it, redesign if it's not, um, if it's too, um, if it's too um, uh, difficult for us. That we need to redesign in terms of um, students' capacity or capabilities to um, to uh, acquire knowledge. Then tests. Okay, we need to um, um, apply. Uh, what we research, and if it's not working, then that's the possibility that we can 
But yeah, thank you so much, everyone, for your um listening. Thank you, me. Thank you. for the uh, profound presentation about uh, challenges in teaching. Uh, uh, Mr. An mentioned there are seven challenges. Curriculum alignment, assignment and evaluation, inclusive education, sustainability, learning style, lack of resources, uh, teaching and training. And at the at the end, uh, uh, she also gives some kind of uh, solution. The teacher must uh, have uh, must. Do uh, some kind of research and development, research about the which methods that are suitable for his or herself, and developing that method for his or her teaching, and designing or redesigning the methods that are already available. Sorry, everybody. Uh, about the signal. Uh, can everybody hear me? Okay. Let me continue. Uh, about the conclusion from mystery and presentation. Uh, in the uh, the solution given by mystery and is five steps of research and development, research the method. Uh. Developing the method that uh, suitable for the teacher, uh, design or redesign the method that are being chosen, uh, and testing the result of the design, uh, and giving the improvement after the testing is being done. Uh, that is uh, for from all the four speakers today. The next session is question and answer. So I give time for all the participants. A participation participation here uh, to give a uh, question for all the speakers is there any question uh, for the from the participant is miss mika still here Maybe question from a uh, student from Mr. Fiki Ismarang or student from Nakon Raja Simara Jepat University. If there is no question, I will give one question for from all presentation from all four speakers. Uh, from Mr. Mrs. Tipatona is a first time uh, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Uh, from the perspective of uh, elementary school program student in Universitas Vegas Marang, uh, and the second presenter is. Miss Sandy about classroom management. There are three three important elements: the learning environment, the active classroom, and the interaction between student and teacher. And the third 
uh, speaker is Mr. Pratena uh, talk about fast integration in learning at elementary school. Uh, the integration can be done through three concepts. Uh, the first is learning with the art. The second is learning through the art. The third is learning about the art. And the last uh, from Miss Rian, uh, talking about challenges uh, faced by students, uh, sorry, faced by teacher uh, in elementary school level, in specifically or all of the teacher generally. Uh, the challenges uh, consist of curriculum alignment, assignment and installation, inclusive education, sustainability, learning style, lack of resources, and teaching training. Uh, from the end of the this lecture series, maybe I can ask for all the participants to turn on the camera so I can report the attendance. There are four slides. I will take the first slide first. One, two, three. Sorry. Uh, let me. One, two, three. That is the first screen, the second screen, one, two, three. Now on the third screen, one, two, three. No, for the last screen, one, two, three. Okay, thank you for all the participants for joining our content our presentation today uh, i hope on uh, the presentation forum all four speakers can give you insight about the uh, teaching progress in elementary school for specific and in other level of education in general uh, as much as for for today i close this lecture series thank you to uh, good day for everyone. Thank you, Mr. Ali. Thank you, Miss Wai Wale. Thank you, everybody. Wai Wale. Thank you, Mr. so much. Thank you in having us. Sandy, Miss Sandy. Thank you, Miss Sandy. And all of my friends.